Assalamu alaikum students and welcome to another lecture of chemistry with me Khwaja Yaseen and here we are at Slate just one click away so students in the last video we talked about how moles is very important how be it an O level or an A level student the, the topic of moles will make the whole exam easy or difficult for you but that only depends on the fact if you have a good grip of, on the knowledge on that topic so in the next series of videos we will cover all the important concepts and topics of moles so that it can be easy for you to make, to understand and decode those questions of moles so let's start with the basics first you all you all know that what atomic mass is when we simply talk about atomic mass what is atomic mass atomic mass is just the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom but when we talk about an important term which is the relative atomic mass also denoted by ar the relative atomic mass so this is somewhat related to the atomic mass but the point is the term relative comes here now we all know what relative means one is the relative that we all hate our blood relatives but this is the, the this isn't that relative this is the relative of having a comparison with something just that we say oh the weather is hotter today in relation to yesterday or relative to yesterday so this this is that very same relative so what is the relative atomic mass now if i have to define the relative atomic mass the relative atomic mass is the mass of an atom of an element as compared to because as we said this is this is going to be about comparison so as compared to 1 12th mass of a carbon 12 isotope now we all know that carbon have three isotopes carbon 12 carbon 13 and carbon 14 but we take carbon 12 as a standard so if this is the same thing you all know that from where will you get the atomic mass value from the periodic table but then why do we do this definition because they may ask you this definition in the exam so what is the relative atomic mass the mass of an atom of an element as compared to 1 12th mass of carbon 12 isotope so as we know that the atomic mass of the atomic mass of sodium is 23 so so will the atomic mass of sodium even the ar the relative atomic mass of sodium that will also be 23 there is not much of a difference in the value here but the concept is here the relative atomic mass and likewise the other concept is relative molecular mass now we have the same concept here with us what is the relative molecular mass the mass of a molecule of a compound as compared to one twelfth mass of a carbon 12 isotope now there's a funny thing about these definitions and even I myself find them funny, find that funny. A one twelfth mass of carbon 12 isotope. You divide 12 by 12, that would be 1. So you just divide any atomic mass by 1 and you get the same answer. So this is just the definition, it's very important as compared to one twelfth mass of carbon 12 isotope. And if we have to calculate the relative molecular mass of any compound, call it NaCl. We know we just discussed so discussed that sodium is 23 and Cl as per the periodic table is 35.5. So the answer would be 58.5, which is the relative molecular mass of sodium chloride. But the reason when I say sodium chloride, before that, let's talk about carbon dioxide as well. 
कार्बन इज ट्वेल्व ऑक्सीजन इज सिक्सटीन इंटू टू दैट्स ट्वेल्व प्लस थर्टी टू दैट मेक्स इट फोर्टी फोर नाउ देर इज वन डिफरेंस बिटवीन द मैसेज ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड एन एंड सोडियम क्लोराइड वी नो दैट कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड is a covalent compound so when we talk about covalent compounds we talk about relative relative molecular mass but in the case of nacl we will not call it relative molecular mass for nacl we use a different term which will be so in the case of ionic compounds we have a different term which is relative formula mass so now this is only for the cases of ionic compounds the concept is the same we calculated the mass of nacl in the similar manner we calculated the mass of carbon dioxide but the only difference is the difference with the terminologies so relative formula mass the mass of a formula unit of an ionic compound as compared to 1/12th mass of carbon 12 isotope so this is just a simple differentiation that for covalent compounds we use the term relative at all molecular mass which is also denoted by the term mr so this mr is very important in the in the coming formulas we will talk about that and likewise relative formula mass is for the ionic compounds now we know one thing for sure that it is just the interplay of these three terms relative atomic mass relative molecular mass and relative formula mass how to use them in a specific formula there is another concept of moles which is very important we talk about percentage composition by mass now we can calculate that how one particular compound contains a specific element what percentage of that element is pre there present in that specific compound there is a particular formula for that and for that formula we will be using the mr and the ar values and we will be solving two questions for that so that you know how easy it is so in order to calculate the percentage composition by mass if we are going to have multiply the the atomic mass the relative atomic mass of the element which is under study and we multiply it by n we will discuss what n is mr and that into 100 so now let's quickly break it down what is the ar ar is the relative atomic mass of element under consideration n number of moles of that element in the compound and mr is the molecular mass of the compound and then since it's a percentage composition formula you multiply the value by 100 let's incorporate these values into questions and formulas and see how this particular formula makes sense the percentage composition by mass we have two different questions let's solve the first one first and then we'll talk about the second one determine which of sides of iron which is iron 203 fe2o3 and iron 34 iron 304 has more iron we will be using the same formula for this purpose let's split the screen and talk about both the irons here we have the same formula we'll just put in the values iron we know that the atomic mass of iron is 56 So fifty six, and how many irons do we see here? We see two. So two irons, and divided by the MR of 
iron to oxide. So we need to calculate the MR. I obviously I myself don't know the value. So let's calculate it. 56 into 2 plus 16, which is the AR of oxygen into 3. So this becomes 48 and this becomes uh, 112. 112, that becomes 160. So we're going, we're going to divide this value by 160 and then multiply by 100. Likewise, for iron 3, we again have 56 and we multiply 56 by 3 this time because we have 3 irons here. And then we divide it by the MR of the compound. So 56 into 3 plus 16 into 4. This becomes 64, and this becomes 150, 150, and 168. 168 plus 64, let me calculate it. 232. And we multiply the value by 100. So now let's see which has more percentage composition of iron. This is 0.7 multiplied by 100, and that makes it 70%. Talking about this one. This becomes 0 0.724 into 100. So that becomes 72.4%. So obviously we know that Determine which oxides of iron has more iron. This iron, Fe3O4, has more amount of iron present in it. Let's do another example, and then we'll be done with this video and this lecture. Ammonium sulfate and urea are two kinds of fertilizers. Reduced in terms of nitrogen can content, which of these fertilizers is best for plants? Again, talking about fertilizers, we know that fertilizers fill in the nutrients for plants. N, P, N, K fertilizers, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium fertilizers. So we are just talking about the nitrogenous fertilizers here. And we have two samples with us. So ammonium sulfate, again, let's split the screen again here. Ammonium sulfate. And the other one is urea. I don't know if you've seen the TV advertisements of urea going on here and there for urea fertilizer. Urea is an important fertilizer. But let's see which one is more nitrogen enriched. The similar formula of nitrogen. So nitrogen is 14 as per the periodic table. And how many nitrogens do we see? One here, but into two. That's two. Now let's do one thing. Let's calculate the molecular mass of this compound. We know sulfur is 32 plus oxygen 16 into 4. That makes it again 64 plus 2 into 14 plus 4 because 14 is nitrogen, 4 is hydrogen. That's 28. So 2 into 28, it's 56. Sorry, not 56, it's 18. So that's 36 plus 32 plus 64. 64 plus 36, that, that makes it 132 as the total MR of the compound. Now let's talk about urea here. In urea, again, we see that we have two nitrogens. One nitrogen in the second multiply by two. So that's 14 into two again. Let's calculate the mass of the whole of the urea. 14 plus two. And we multiply it by two again plus 12 for carbon, 16 for oxygen. So that's 16 into 2, 32, plus 12, plus 16. So that, that makes it uh, 28, 32 plus 12, 44, 44 plus 16, that makes it 60. So now we have to simply just calculate the result, the final result. And it's pretty evident in uh, looking at the equation, but still let's calculate the final result. 
28 divided by 132 into 100. Let's calculate the value. And the answer is 21.21%. That's for ammonium sulfate. And for urea, we have 46.67% of nitrogen. So therefore, having more percentage of nitrogen in it, urea becomes a better fertilizer. So this is what we know about the percentage composition. In the last video, we talked about empirical and molecular formula. And now we may combine the concept of empirical and molecular formula and percentage composition in order to understand another concept, which is the hydrated compounds, which you can see in the next lecture and in the next video on our page. Thank you so much for being here with, with us. And that's me. That's all for today. Allah Hafiz.